Whether you're a journeyman welder or just getting started in a metal working trade, it makes good sense to follow safe operating procedures when you're using cutting and welding equipment. Oxy fuel safety is what I want to talk to you about today. When you buy and use quality equipment, you've taken the first step towards safety and good performance. But ultimately, your safety and the safety of those around you depends on how you use this equipment. If you use your equipment correctly, you'll do a professional job with a maximum degree of safety and productivity. When you use your equipment incorrectly or carelessly, that's when accidents are most likely to happen. Safe use of equipment begins with understanding what the oxyfuel process is designed to do and how the process works. So that's where we'll start today. There are four basic oxyfuel applications, welding, brazing, heating, and cutting. Welding is the process of joining two pieces of metal by melting or fusing their adjoining surfaces. A filler metal is usually added to build up and strengthen the welded joint. Brazing is similar to welding, but here the metals are joined together using a filler metal that melts at a temperature below that of the base metals. Heating is a process used to anneal, case harden, bend, or stress relieve metal. Oxy fuel cutting involves heating metal to its kindling temperature, then cutting it with a stream of pure oxygen. To fully understand oxy fuel processes, you must also understand the function of the gases used. Oxygen is needed to support any combustion, so it's a key ingredient in the oxy fuel process. Oxygen is typically supplied in either liquid containers or in compressed gas cylinders. This is a typical high-pressure oxygen cylinder. The contents are pressurized to over 2,000 pounds per square inch. To safely contain this pressure, these cylinders are made according to very strict standards established by the U.S. Department of Transportation, and they should always be handled with extreme care. If this cylinder fell over and the valve was knocked off, you'd have the equivalent of a gas-powered rocket, one with enough force to go through a brick wall. So always keep cylinders safely chained and in an upright position. And keep these valve protection caps on when the cylinders are not in use. Materials that will burn under normal conditions will burn far more rapidly, even violently, in the presence of pure oxygen. See how this common shop towel burns when supported by atmospheric air, which contains 21% oxygen. Now watch what happens when I add 99.9% .9 pure oxygen. Remember, this shop towel could be a shirt or a pair of pants or gloves. Never use oxygen to dust off clothes, blow out lines, or run air-powered tools, because under the right conditions, it could result in a fire or an explosion. Many fuel gases are used in the oxy-fuel process. Acetylene is the most commonly used fuel gas. Acetylene is an unstable gas and requires a special type of cylinder to safely contain the gas. Acetylene cylinders have a porous core which is saturated with liquid acetone. When acetylene gas is pumped into the cylinder, it's absorbed by the acetone within the porous core. This keeps the gas stable while under pressure. Under industrial guidelines, the maximum safe delivery pressure for acetylene is 15 PSI. To minimize the chance of withdrawing acetone from the acetylene cylinder, no more than one-seventh of the contents should be withdrawn per hour. This acetylene cylinder contains approximately 300 cubic feet of gas, 
So using the one-seventh rule, I can use up to 43 cubic feet in the first hour and not withdraw acetone from the cylinder. This smaller cylinder contains approximately 150 cubic feet of acetylene, and I can safely use about 21 cubic feet in the first hour and not withdraw acetone. If additional gas volume is needed for a particular application, cylinders must be manifolded together like this. Remember, adequate gas volume is essential for the efficient and safe operation of all gas apparatus. Acetylene cylinders must always be stored in an upright position in order to keep the liquid acetone properly contained. There are many other types of fuel gases such as MAP gas, a group known as the propylenes, natural gas, and propane. Each gas has specific burning properties, temperatures, and operating pressures, and each requires specific apparatus. For complete information about oxygen and fuel gases, cylinder care and handling, and appropriate equipment, talk to a gas supplier or refer to your safety and operator's guide. Now let's take a look at the components of a typical oxyfuel system. This is a typical oxygen acetylene setup using a small heating torch. Pressure from the oxygen and acetylene cylinders is reduced to working pressure by the regulators on each cylinder. Cylinders should not be used without proper pressure reducing regulators. The delivery pressure data for the selected tip or nozzle is found in an operation chart like this. Charts provide specific pressure and gas flow requirements for individual tip styles and sizes. Hoses carry the gases separately to the torch handle where each gas is controlled by a valve. Before lighting, the valves are used to purge or clean out each line independently. The fuel gas valve is then opened, the gas ignited, and the flame adjusted. Then, the oxygen valve is opened and the flame readjusted until the desired flame configuration is achieved. When you use the proper equipment and follow correct procedures, the oxyfuel process can be accomplished safely. However, it is necessary to be aware of potential hazards, which, if ignored, can result in serious injury to the operator and damage to the equipment. Two potentially hazardous conditions are reverse flow of gas and flashback. A reverse flow condition occurs when fuel gas enters the oxygen stream or when oxygen enters the fuel gas stream. Reverse flow most commonly occurs when one cylinder goes empty during operation, creating an imbalance of pressure in the system. It can also be caused by a clogged or blocked tip. If reverse flow isn't stopped, gas can flow all the way back into the cylinders. If these gases are ignited within the system, it can cause equipment damage and personal injury. Reverse flow can be prevented by using clean tips, making sure that the flow of gases from the tip is not blocked using recommended pressures and installing reverse flow check valves. The reverse flow check valve is a safety device designed to allow gas to flow in only one direction, from the regulator to the torch. Since reverse flow check valves are mechanical devices, they should be routinely tested according to the manufacturer's recommendations to ensure they remain in proper working order. I want to emphasize that if ignition of mixed gases in the system does occur, a reverse flow check valve alone will not stop a flame from proceeding upstream. 
Flashback is a term used to describe the condition resulting from mixed gases burning inside the torch. One common cause of flashback is not supplying an adequate volume of fuel gas to support the demand of the tip. This condition is called starvation. When this occurs, the flame flashes back to the mixture. A flashback, if not extinguished immediately, will likely result in damage to the torch and other components of the system and could cause serious injury to anyone near the operation. Flashback arresters are devices which have a sintered stainless steel filter that extinguishes the flame and prevents it from moving upstream in the system. Flashback arresters may be installed between the regulator and the hose. However, since the hose itself contains a significant amount of gas, a torch-mounted flashback arrestor has been developed to prevent a flashback from entering the hose. Some Victor torches and torch handles like this one incorporate built-in flashback arresters and re reverse flow check valves. With this device, protection against these hazards is always in place and accessory check valves and flash arresters are not necessary. Remember, reverse flow check valves by themselves will not prevent a flashback. So it's a good idea to always use both check valves and flashback arresters in your system. It's also important to make sure that the workplace is safe. Accidents and fires are almost always the result of carelessness. Keep the work area uncluttered and especially free of combustibles always have a fire extinguisher on hand. And if you must work near combustibles, set up a shield to contain the sparks and the hot metal. And have someone keep a close watch on the area while you work. Make sure the work area has good ventilation. The oxyfuel process can not only deplete oxygen from the work area, but certain applications create highly toxic fumes. This may require the use of special breathing apparatus. Remember, proper ventilation is a must. Now we're ready to set up our equipment. Safe equipment setup begins here at the cylinder valve. First, inspect the valve carefully for damage, particularly the seat and the threads. And if there's any oil or grease on the valve or cylinder, don't use it. Inform the gas supplier immediately. Oil and grease in the presence of oxygen can burn violently. Before attaching the regulators, crack the cylinder valve. Just open it a bit, then close it again. This helps remove any loose dirt or dust that may be in the valve. And this is a good time to start developing a very important safety habit. Always stand to the side opposite the valve port every time you open the cylinder valve. And make sure no one is standing in front of the valve port when you crack it. Here's a typical high pressure industrial regulator. It reduces the high cylinder pressure to a usable working pressure. Never attempt to use a cylinder without a proper pressure reducing regulator it's important that the regulator be properly sized for the specific pressure and volume of the application. Before attaching the regulator to the cylinder, always give it a thorough visual inspection to make sure it's in good working condition. Pay particular attention to any damaged threads or seating surfaces, a dirty or missing filter, or the presence of oil or grease. If you find any of these things, don't use the regulator. Take it to a qualified repair facility for a complete inspection and cleaning. Regulator inlet connections are threaded differently, so the oxygen regulator can't be put on a gas cylinder or vice versa. 
you should never have to force the regulator nut to start the connection. And this is important. Never change the inlet connection. When attaching the regulators, make sure the wrench fits the nut properly. It's important to remember that specially designed regulators and inlet connections are required for cylinders with pressures in excess of 3,000 PSI. Be especially careful when pressurizing the regulator. On regulators with an adjusting screw such as this type, first release the tension by turning it counterclockwise till it turns freely. This places the high pressure seat of the regulator in a closed position. Always stand to one side of the regulator so the cylinder valve is between you and the regulator. Now, slowly open the cylinder valve until maximum pressure is indicated on the high pressure gauge. Then open the oxygen valve completely. Most oxygen valves are designed to seal only in the fully closed and fully open position. The fuel gas cylinder valve should be opened a maximum of one turn. Remember, if the cylinder valve has a key, leave the key on the valve. That way the system can be shut down in a hurry if necessary. Welding hoses carry the gases from the regulators to the torch. Now these hoses are new, so they're easy to inspect. If the hoses are cut, worn, or damaged, or have oil or grease on them, they should be repaired or replaced. Welding hoses are usually color-coded, red for fuel gas, green for oxygen. The fuel gas hose also has grade specifications. Be sure to consult current regulations to ensure the proper grade of hose is being used. The hose connections have different threads. Oxygen hoses have right-hand threads. Fuel gas hoses have left-hand threads. The V-groove on the outside of the fuel hose nut indicates that it has left-hand threads. Attach the hoses and tighten with a wrench. Now it's time to purge the hose line. This procedure reduces the chance of any foreign material entering the torch. Set the regulator at three to five pounds of pressure and run the oxygen through the hose for a few seconds. New hoses which contain manufacturing residue or a hose that's been stored improperly might take a bit longer to clear. Now purge the fuel gas hose in the same manner. Always purge hoses in a well-ventilated area, away from people. And of course, always keep fuel gas and oxygen away from sparks or flame. Inspect the inlet connections in the torch carefully, paying particular attention to the threads and seating surfaces. Victor torch handles, like this one, have reverse flow check valves and flash arresters built into the valve bodies, so accessory safety devices are not necessary. If you're using a Victor torch without built-in check valves or flash arresters, or another brand, I strongly recommend installing accessory check valves and flashback arresters here at the torch. Remember that these devices may restrict flow to varying degrees. So always consult the manufacturer's flow performance data. Next, attach the hoses to the torch handle and tighten securely with a wrench. Welding nozzles come in a wide variety of types and sizes for different kinds of work. Be sure to select and use the proper size and type for the work to be done. Inspect the nozzle carefully before attaching it. Make sure there are two O-rings here on the cone end 
and make sure they're in good condition. If there are less than two, or if they're damaged or worn, the nozzle won't seal properly, and a leak here could cause an accident and injury. When attaching the nozzle to the torch, hand tighten only. Wrench tightening could damage the seating surface or the O-rings and cause a leak. Different size nozzles require different gas pressures and volumes. Again, you get that information from a tip chart. Proper oxygen and fuel gas pressure settings are very important, so be sure to use the chart and provide adequate volume with proper pressure settings. For this welding nozzle, I'll set the oxygen and the fuel gas regulators at 5 PSI. Open the fuel gas valve for three to five seconds to purge the system and check the regulator to make sure the flowing pressure remains adequate. Close the fuel valve. Next, purge the oxygen side and check flowing oxygen pressure. If the pressure drops below the recommended setting, reset the regulator. At this point, it's a good idea to check the entire system for leaks. To do that, just turn off both cylinder valves and watch the gauges for a minute. If the gauge pressures remain where you set them before, the system is leak tight. As you open the cylinder valves, watch the gauge needle. Any movement of the needle indicates a possible leak. Check the system for loose connections. If you can't find the leak, do not use the torch. Have the system checked and repaired by a qualified technician. Before lighting the torch, make sure to put on goggles to protect your eyes from sparks, heat, and the intense light of the flame. It's also important to be dressed properly for the job you're doing. To light the torch, open the fuel valve about one-eighth turn and ignite the gas. Hold the striker away from the tip, not cupped over the end where it could restrict gas flow. When using acetylene, adjust the gas valve until the flame stops smoking. When the smoke and soot disappear, proper acetylene gas flow has been achieved. Now, Open the oxygen valve until you get a bright neutral flame. This neutral flame is used for most oxyfuel procedures. If you're using a multi-flame or welding nozzle for an application and there's too much heat, don't adjust the gas pressure down to reduce the heat. Simply change to a smaller size nozzle. Now let's talk about cutting. The cutting attachment connects to the torch handle just like the welding and heating nozzles using a double O-ring seal and hand tighten only. Before attaching it, inspect the cone end and O-rings for any damage that could cause a leak or malfunction. Also, pay close attention to the seating surface and threads on the torch head and look for any evidence of misuse or damage to the torch. The torch should be in good condition to provide safe operation. If the torch is damaged, don't use it. Now, refer to the tip chart to determine the size tip needed and the oxygen and fuel gas pressure settings required. After you've selected the tip, inspect the seating area for any sign of damage that might cause a leak. And make sure the orifices are free of slag or dirt. When attaching the tip, tighten it securely with a wrench. When using a cutting attachment, the oxygen supply is controlled at the attachment, here. So the oxygen valve on the torch handle 
must be completely open before lighting. Now, after the regulators have been set, be sure to purge the system and recheck to make sure flowing pressures don't drop below recommended settings. To light the torch, open the fuel gas valve about one-eighth turn and ignite. When using acetylene, adjust the gas valve until the flame stops smoking. About there. Now open the oxygen valve and adjust to a neutral flame. Depress the cutting oxygen lever and readjust to a neutral flame if necessary. When you're finished with a welding or cutting operation, first close the oxygen valve, then close the fuel gas valve. This shutdown sequence is important because it allows you to check for leaks in the system and it's the recommended procedure in case of a malfunction. If you follow this shutdown procedure and you hear a small pop, it means the oxygen valve is leaking and is still permitting oxygen to flow. If there is a small flame clinging to the tip, it means that the fuel gas valve is leaking. So by shutting off the oxygen first, you'll get a quick check of both valves every time you use the torch. If you shut down the fuel gas first, you'll get a pop, and soot may be thrown back into the torch, possibly clogging the gas passages. To shut down the whole system, first close both cylinder valves. Then, release the pressure in the system by momentarily opening and closing each torch valve until no pressure is shown on the regulators. Start with the fuel gas. Bleed the system, then close the valve. Next, do the oxygen side of the system. Never open both valves at the same time. That may cause a reverse flow. Now, release the tension on the adjusting screws by turning them counterclockwise until they turn freely. As I mentioned earlier, a frequent cause of flashback is starvation, simply not providing enough fuel to the tip. If the burning rate of the flame exceeds the speed that the gases are coming out the tip, the flame will burn back into the torch to the mixing point as shown here. It's possible to have flashback with any apparatus, but it's more likely and potentially more dangerous as tip size and gas volume increase, such as with this large multi-flame. This multi-flame has been heated to simulate excessive reflected heat. Now see what happens when the fuel gas pressure is reduced to starve the tip. Since the potential for flashback is far greater when using a large multi-flame, take extra precautions to avoid starving the tip. Follow the manufacturer's recommendations for hose size and high capacity equipment, and be sure to have enough cylinder capacity to provide proper gas pressures and volumes for the size nozzle in service. Oxyfuel accidents and injuries are usually the result of several safety rules being ignored simultaneously, but you can't afford to take chances. Stay alert to every part of the operation and remember these basic rules. Always read and understand the operating instructions thoroughly before using your equipment. 
Always keep cylinders safely chained and valve protection caps on when not in use. Keep oil, grease, and petroleum-based materials away from gas apparatus. Always stand so the cylinder valve is between you and the regulator when opening the cylinder valve. Open cylinder valves slowly and carefully. Always use reverse flow check valves and flashback arresters and be conscious of the causes of reverse flow and flashback. Always refer to your welding and cutting charts for proper tip sizes, pressure settings, and volume requirements. Always purge the system before lighting the torch. Always keep your work area clean and well ventilated. Wear protective clothing. Keep sparks away from combustible materials and cylinders. Keep your apparatus in proper working condition. And never allow unqualified persons to service your equipment. If you take these actions routinely and make them a regular part of your work routine, you'll work more efficiently and with maximum safety.